tonight. We are so glad here at St. John's to be worshiping once again with you from Westminster and glad that we can join in Ash Wednesday together. I now invite those who are able to please stand. We come with our imperfections, problems, worries, and stress. And hear God telling us that we are good enough. We come with our guilt, sin, and questions. And hear God telling us that we are good enough. We come for confession, for forgiveness, for transformation. We come to worship Christ who offers transformation. second chapter at the 12th verse. Hear now the word of the Lord. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rent your heart and not your clothing. Rent, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not return and re relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpets in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. 
gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and the minister of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land, and he had pity on his people. In response to his people, the Lord said, I'm sending you a grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a mockery among the nations. The word of the Lord. before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they might be praised by others truly I tell you they received a reward but when you give alms do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you and whenever you pray do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received a reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room, and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. The word of the Lord.
Tonight is the beginning of Lent, a time in which we seek to draw closer to Jesus, a time in which we seek to grow spiritually. We come tonight to seek forgiveness, and we recognize that we are imperfect people living in an imperfect world, a world that God looked at and said, this is good. We are good, and yet we often feel not good enough. The struggle is an age-old struggle. Jesus is teaching the people, and he says, don't be a hypocrite. Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie share that Jesus used the word to describe those who put on airs in public, to make people believe that they're holy, that their religious practices were, well, perfect. But their hearts were not actually into their religious practice. Their hearts were into the rewards that people gave them, the approval from people. All around us, uh, society seems to be telling us that the purpose of life is to strive towards perfectionism. I mean, we look around and everybody else seems to be living that perfect life, right? And then we look at our own and say, what am I doing wrong? My life doesn't seem, quote, perfect like everybody else appears or writes about on, on social media or shares about at times. Advertising tells us, you know, if you use the right moisturizer, your skin will stay young forever and you'll have that perfect skin. And if you use the right toothpaste, your, your teeth will be white as snow and everybody will say, wow, look at your smile. And if you're on the right diet, you'll have that perfect body, right? And so if we have then the, the right job, the right friends, the right stuff, we'll not just be seen as good enough, we'll be seen as, you know, those people that have it all or those in people. We want sometimes the applaud and approval of others. What we do looks good, but it's not impressing God. And then if we take an honest look at our lives, we think about our day and realize, yeah, I yelled at my sibling, I had road rage, and I made that not nice gesture to someone driving by. <laughs> yeah, I was a little impatient with, well, most everybody today. And I didn't have time, really, to pray or to spend time with God. I shoved a ton of junk food in my mouth, and you know what? I enjoyed every last bite. <laughs> it was good, right? It seems that we often struggle in so many aspects of our lives and then just end up feeling guilty and miserable. It seems like, yeah, the more that we try to climb up the ladder in life, the more we at, towards success, towards perfectionism, the more we just slide back down. Our lives seem pretty good, but then we look around and we feel like we don't measure up to society's standards. It seems like life should be more than measuring up to standards and trying just to be better. For all of those who are arrogant people who think they're perfect, you know, I hate to bust their bubble, but Jesus is the only one that's perfect. Although there are times in our church where we kind of profess that, that we can be perfect if we just try hard enough to be like Jesus. And yet it seems like it is, perfectionism still seems out of our reach. North African Bishop Augustine said, I cannot not sin. And I don't know, but I feel the same way. It seems the message everywhere is about transforming us into something perfect. Can we ever be good enough? Our spiritual practices are supposed to be drawing us closer to God, drawing us into that more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And yet, often our faith rituals just become for show. Inside our souls, we don't feel good enough, so we strive to become more religious so that others will look at us and say, oh, they're a good Christian. 
You know, they're really a holy person. And then Jesus says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't do things just for show. He said the hypocrites love to stand up and pray in the houses of worship on the street corners so that everyone will see them. The message version says, find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. And then the focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense God's grace. Then Jesus said, and when you fast, okay, now, whether I can see your face or not, make your saddest face. Yeah. See, I can tell, even if you have a mask on, I can tell in your eyes that you're showing sad faces. So Jesus said, when you fast, don't put on those sad faces. He said, that's what the hypocrites do, because they want to look as bad as they can, so then everybody will feel sorry for them, and say, oh, look, those poor souls, they're fasting today. Yet our spiritual practices aren't supposed to be burdensome or for show. Asking God for forgiveness isn't for show. It's a genuine remorse that we offer so that God can transform and cleanse and renew our spirit. Jesus said, do not store up riches for yourself on, here on earth. Don't spend your life climbing up the ladder, reaching for perfectionism. Stand in the garden where you are the place where you are, and make the most of the life that you have. Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie went on to write that sometimes it is life itself that robs us of the shiny, perfect life that we had planned for ourselves. A diagnosis happens, a broken heart happens, there's a lost opportunity here and there. But yet this Lent, let us seek rather Rather than change for the best, let us seek to gain momentum that one day at a time, to reach for a faith that is never perfect, but it's good enough. Tonight we come as vulnerable people, remembering that we are dust. If we look at dust, or the dirt in these pots, we see the green plants growing and thriving. We aren't here to obtain perfection. We're here to be cleansed and transformed into new growth, into new beginnings, showered with God's unconditional love and grace. Amen. I invite you now to stand with me and join in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. A litany of penitence. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to the one and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth. We have, we have sinned, sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have, have done and by what we have, what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all our heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor, neighbor as ourselves. We have not forgiven others. Christ, have mercy on us. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. Christ, have mercy on us. 
God, we confess our unfaithfulness, pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. Christ, have mercy on us. When we exploit and envy others, Christ, have mercy on us. When we put our privileged selves first before the poor and needy and disadvantaged of this world, Christ, have mercy on us. When we have unfairly judged our neighbors and shown prejudice and contempt for those who are different from us, Christ, Christ have mercy on us. Forgive us, God. Amen. We approach God with a penitent heart, a contrite spirit, and we say to him, we are but what we are, and we wish that we could be more. And we seek his forgiveness and we seek his mercy. We don't earn it. There's nothing we could do to have him say, oh, that's good. Instead, through his love, through his love for his children, he sent a savior. He sent his son into this world who lived, walked among us, who taught us, healed us, who prayed for us, who died for us, and who took all of our sins from us and left them behind and rose again in joy and in, and in peace. It is through that act of great joy, that act of salvation that God provided for us through Christ, that based on the faith that we have in Jesus, I can proclaim to you tonight. Our sins are forgiven. Amen and amen.
invite you to come forward for the ashes, either on your forehead or if you want on your hand, just place your hand out so that we know. Um, and you can come up that both sides and kind of fill in when one side gets down. Um, also, if you haven't already done so, you are, you are invited to share an offering tonight. The plate is at the back. And if you have an envelope that has your church's name on it, then it will go to your church. And if it's cash, it will go to the Evan City Food Pantry. Please stand. God accomplished in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Amen. Let us together. Pray the prayer that our Lord and Savior has taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. And give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against, against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us go forth with a clean heart, cleansed by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us. And let us go forth with the love of God, guided by the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.